we're going live. When? We're live. <sighs> Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Um, welcome to our virtual write-in. Um, if you guys don't know what a virtual write-in is, welcome for. If you're coming here for the first time, welcome. If you don't know what a virtual write-in is, it's basically just um, a area where all of us writers can come together and have lots of fun and do writing sprints, which is basically just writing as many words as you can to a given prompt in a specific time frame. And or this, you don't have to follow the prompts if you really don't want to. That too. If you want to kind of just write on your own within the time frame on whatever you're already working on, you can do that as if well. You're a cool rebel who doesn't like following the rules. Absolutely. Um, and then we can kind of just talk to each other and have lots and lots of fun while we all embrace our writing styles. Yeah. Um, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Um, that's a great way to get to know all of our virtual write-ins and to be able to be notified the next time we have one. So definitely click the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. Um, this Today we're going to be talking about organizing your life before November. So this is going to be a really great way to incorporate um, our Nano Prep 101 theme, which is basically just making sure that you organize everything in your life before the no national novel writing month event. Um, but before we start that, um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Nina. I am the programs intern here at NaNoWriMo HQ. I'm Freddie, the editorial intern. And we'd also like to introduce you guys as well. So another nice thing to do before we actually begin the writing sprints and everything is uh, to have people say hi in the chat, or if you've already done that, to kind of say where you're at in the chat so for example we blobby has, sorry <laughs> blobby has not been deflated blobby he has not been deflated. on the floor that's true but he's here now exactly say hello <laughs> so if you guys haven't already say where you're coming or say where you're writing from we're going to be writing from berkeley california um so yeah definitely hi each other and get to know each other in the chat if you haven't already um I also wanted to remind you guys that Nano Prep 101 is um, a great place for you guys can for you guys to go and write in your own space and um, kind of go through all of the different resources that we have to introduce you to um, a way to organize your own writing styles. It's a mm -hmm. great way for you to go at your own pace, kind of look through the different resources resources that we have, go and practice writing at your own speed and um, kind of see where you'd like to navigate your own story. We also want to remind you that you can definitely start your projects now. It would be a really great time to do that just so that way you can kind of get into the motions of um, writing for your projects before November starts. And to do that, you, you just go on the website and it's under under like the my nano right mm -hmm. so you can go on to the nano rhymo nano website and um under my nano rhymo if you've already got an account set up it's basically just as simple as clicking the create a button or create a new project button and kind of going through the motions there to set it up mm -hmm. so you want to go ahead and start talking about the theme uh sure so uh this 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 week's nano prep thing is organize your life. So we thought we'd do some word sprints kind of associated with that. Um, the first one is kind of on a theme of disorder, of randomness, of chaos. So um, in a minute here, we're going to get that one started. Uh, let's see. I'm seeing people checking in. We got someone from, we got Army Soldier 33 mm. from Baton Rouge. Ooh, from Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? I haven't been there. I Anything. haven't been anywhere outside of the country, really, mm. at all. I'm pretty sure that's in Louisiana. Is it in Louisiana? I've barely been outside of California, so mm -hmm. I don't travel very much. It's a big I want state. to, though. <laughs> it's a huge state. Let's see. Uh, got people from Colorado, Lavender Blue Dilly Dilly. Mm-hmm. We got Darcy Meredith from Canada. I'm seeing a lot of people from England, from different parts of England. Hmm. East Midlands, England. Yeah, Baton Rouge is the state capital of Louisiana. Wow. 
What are you thinking? <sighs> Central California in the Central Valley. Central California. Ooh, someone from New Zealand. I what just need to in New Zealand. I have no idea. What time is it in New Zealand? What time is it in? It's 9 a.m. For some reason I thought it would be late or early or whatever. I would expect it to be late yeah. or early too. All right, so if we're all ready, I think we can get started with that first word word uh, word sprint. This one's going to be how long? Five minutes? Yeah, so we're going to be doing this for five minutes, and then when we're done, you guys are going to hear a little bit of an alarm. Um, that will let us know to start discussing the topics, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to generate two random words. We don't know what they are yet because they're random and generated, and then um, you can write a story around them, write a paragraph structured around them, trying to work them into something you're already working on, mm -hmm. or just kind of go off on your own and not even use the words. Okay, here we go. All right, so the two words are faucet and nebulous. Faucet um, and nebulous. So we're gonna add that into two words that you're gonna be using are and then in just a second, we're going to start our writing sprint. All right, faucet and nebulous. All right, is everybody ready? Or nebulas, if you want to go sci fi or with nebulas. it. Everybody ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. Five minutes starting now.
All right, so we've got about a minute and 30 seconds left. Mm. All right. Strip puzzle alarm. Finish up whatever you're on. Our writing sprint number one is completed. So now we're going to talk about what we wrote, about what you wrote, about what all of us wrote. Um, so we'd everyone, like you to oh, everyone, go. yeah, post it in the in the in the chat if you want to share it, um, like an excerpt or whatever, or the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and uh you know how many words oh there we go mm -hmm. some more counts popping in yeah so what did you write about um i wrote about it was pretty on the nose i wrote about a woman turning a faucet on and finding it full of like nebulous iron and, and stuff gotcha nice nice so i wrote what did i write i wrote about a cloud mm. that's just floating in space in everything in sight, light, sound, Ooh. air, all kinds of things. And um, it's very nebulous. It's very large. Mm -hmm. It's very much a nebula. And eventually it essentially pops out Earth. And then Earth goes around collecting matter, which then develops into creatures, which then develops into humans, which then develops into people creating technologies like faucets. Like a, it's like a creation myth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So we've got a couple people posting in things that they've written. Or do you want to go over those? Um, yeah. Let's see. We got one from Elijah Martin. Uh, Avalon fiddled with a faucet handle, cursing at its refusal to cooperate. The damn thing was always acting up. Sighing, she gave up on washing her greasy hands and went back to her cooking. I like that one. The dish smelled amazing already, a nebulous and wonderful mess of peppers, meat, spices, and other vegetables. I really like that one. I That's, really like that one. I like that it's like an unexpected use of the word nebulous. Right. But it's like, mm, it fits. That's good. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Do you see any you want to read? As my hand rested on the faucet, so Rebecca Dugas said, as my hand rested on the faucet, I felt a nebulous sense of doom creep over me. What kind of impact was climate change having on all the other animals in the world? Mm. I like that one. Yeah, pointed. <laughs> Here's one that, that used nebula, Lindsay Warner. Mm -hmm. An immortal staring over a nebula, remembering. He never felt quite as alone as he did when surrounded by memories and family and friends long past. Nice. nice. So, looks like you guys did a really great job of using the two words that we gave to you. They were very random words, so mm -hmm. the fact that people are able to kind of give really great stories 
and really great analogies just from the two words that we gave to you guys was is a really great example of how you can kind of organize things in your life, mm -hmm. um, random or otherwise, to kind of fit into the theme that you're working with, to fit into whatever story you're building. There's another good one. Urban Moonchild said, I wrote about a nebulous forest where the character suddenly heard a faucet dripping out of nowhere. Nice. That one's spooky. That one is spooky. Very on brand for October. Oh, yeah. I would love to hear more about that story. Okay. So part of our discussion for this is going to be asking you guys what the biggest organization and time management issues you struggle with in November. What are those big issues, those big problems that you just, just can't get over. And maybe we can read some responses or we can respond mm -hmm. and kind of get some ideas going as far as uh, ways to come over that. Or maybe we can talk about ways that we struggle with our own issues. Um, I know for me, the biggest thing that um, I struggle with is making sure that I actually stay towards whatever or whatever projects I'm working on, actually making the time for them and actually making sure that I stick to any plans mm -hmm. that I make for them. I Google calendar everything in my life pretty much right now. And sometimes, you know, I don't necessarily take all the time that I need in order to do some of the projects that I have to work mm -hmm. on. So that's one thing that I struggle with. Yeah, so I, I always wonder if, it, if it, most people are like, I don't know, for myself, I'm like good at the scheduling part, mm -hmm. and then I'm really bad at the executing the schedule. Mm -hmm. So I, I always have a plan where it's like, okay, I'll set aside like two hours every night right. where I do nothing but write, and then those two hours I spend playing video games or something. Right. And uh, yeah. So let's see. Let's see. Um, Making sure that I actually write every day and yeah, I'm Batman. That's a really, really good point. A lot but of times. every yeah, every time that I've won NaNoWriMo has mm -hmm. been because I wrote like every day. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Mo K says I have ADD and I'm not taking meds. So actually, sticking to a schedule is more of a dream than a reality. Gotcha. I feel that. I yeah, have, I, I also I have ADHD. No, I'm not on meds. So and, seeing to a schedule can be very can be very difficult. And uh, Patricia Skoll says making family respect writing time. Mm. That's also a really big one. If people don't kind of respect the time that you've set out for plans that you've made, yeah. it can be quite difficult to actually make sure that you devote all of that time to what you're yeah. working on. Uh, Joni Keller also has um, problems with organizing around family. Biggest organizational obstacle is always, always family. I have to drop my stuff when my family wants to call, talk, spend time together. Yeah, that one's rough. I don't know how much you want to tell tell people like, oh, you know, but like also taking time for yourself is important. Right. Um, I'd say just get rid of family. Yeah. <laughs> just get rid of family. Um, and I think I saw one that Zara writes said. Mm. If you scroll up a little yeah. bit. My biggest organ. No. Uh, mine is mainly finding the motivation to sit down and write, mm -hmm. so I struggle with time management on that part. Yeah, that's another really big thing that I struggle with too. Uh, is the motivation to just sit down and get it all out. I struggled with writing writer's block for a very very long time, so the motivation just never came to me. And I feel like a lot of people deal with that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. So. Now we're going to go into sprint number two. Watercolor Hearts says, I wish I was a morning writer. I do as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a very late night writer. Yeah. Like Amber says, I end up writing late at night and it bleeds into the next day. That's what happens. Yeah. I'll be like writing at midnight and then updating my word count and then it suddenly shifts over the next day. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So the next prompt that we're going to do is writing a play-by-play -play or hourly schedule of your character's day starting when they wake up. So any character, if you've already started a novel, you can use that character. If you haven't started a novel yet, you can make up a character if you want to. Um, just write about their day and write everything you can possibly think of in the most intricate of details, starting from the time that they wake up to the moment they brush their teeth to the moment they get dressed, everything. 
So we're going to have 10 minutes to do this prompt. And let's see here. All right. So 10 minutes, right? A play by play or hourly schedule of your character's day starting from when they wake up. All right? Ready? And start.
So we have about five minutes left.
Time's up. Such a common one. All right. So that was our second sprint. How'd it go for you guys? How'd it go for you? It went pretty well, actually. I kind of got into a nice rhythm of like trying to figure out how long each thing would take. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I don't know. I didn't really go hour by hour. I went more play by play gotcha. in terms of the prompts terms. I just kind of outlined things. How about you? I So I didn't necessarily put mine in like a time frame necessarily. Like I didn't put all of my characters' um, actions into a specific time frame, but I did mm -hmm. go into a lot of detail about what exactly they were doing. So like brushing their teeth, um, making sure that they got dressed, grabbing all the things that they need from their house before they head out to work, getting in the car, driving over there, almost running people over and then not running people over, and lots of things like that. I actually went into a whole um, stream of consciousness where this character decides that she wants to travel 3,000 miles to go and see her sister. Mm -hmm. So she like goes into her boss's office and like pretends that she's sick and asks to have the day off so that way she can go and go and visit her sister. So, so cool. I'm wondering what, like what people like discovered about their characters because I know I like filling in like a whole day I found like some new things about my characters. So mm -hmm. if like people wanted to share like maybe their favorite like moment that they kind of found unexpectedly mm -hmm. in the chat or just a moment that they like, yeah, I'd love to read some of those. Uh, let's see, we're getting some word counts from people. Yeah. Let's see, I saw one. Let's see. Zara writes, that's an impressive word count. So Zara writes got 784 words mm -hmm. down. That's really impressive. Yeah, uh, Nandita got 303 words writing on their phone. Nice. Which is pretty incredible. Yeah. I don't think I've ever typed 303 words. I know. On my phone, period. Um, let's see. And then see. Mati Montai, 148 words for jumping right in the middle. So, like, right in the middle of the sprint. 148 words is still That's really pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 243, didn't use the prompt. That's totally valid. Yeah. But I did have a lot of action. That's nice. great. That's good. So other thing we want to discuss is do you and your main we got character. Some, got some excerpts here. Any excerpts? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Um, let's see. Lindsay writes, uh, the first thing Cordelia was aware of when she woke up was texture. If she was soft, she was in her bed at the castle. If her body was warm and her face was cold, her sleeping bag traveling. Mm -hmm. Anymore that you like? I discovered that I don't understand this. I discovered that Bruce Wayne really did want to be there for his baby mama really bad, but couldn't. <laughs> um, are you writing a fan fiction about Bruce Wayne? If I so, wonder. amazing. I'd be interested in reading that. Let's see, I feel bad for my Z Zathina Bloodstorm says. Cool name. Now I feel bad for my MC who, as it turns out, only gets five hours of sleep on a good day due to her tight mage training schedule. Mm. Mage training will do that to you. Mm. Wolf and Boar said that uh, they wrote 252 words. Great job. Uh, they were running with the Nebulous Faucet idea and started writing a sci-fi story. And mm. they don't usually do that. Well, so kudos. Have fun with that. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, so... Do you and your main character share any of the organizational habits that you discussed in your story that you just wrote? Um, organization tips do you have for fellow NaNoWriMo writers? Mm -hmm. So um, I do not share any of my character's organizational habits. Mm -hmm. My character is very messy and I don't like my Yeah. <laughs> So I don't think I necessarily share general organizational settings. Um, um, yeah, you know, I think I tend to try and write people that are opposite of me. I am very messy. Mm -hmm. And so I, I tend to write people that are like fastidious about their thing, but it usually ends up like, I don't know, the way they kind of emerge always, always ends up being somewhat disorganized as, mm -hmm. as people. I don't know, maybe it's just harder to write 
-hmm. an organized person when you're not organized than it is to go the other way. Right. Okay. So let's see what some people said. We're still. We can. We can also still look at some. Um, yeah. Some. Some, some excerpts. Some other other things that people are sharing. Yeah. It's like uh, let's see. Like watercolor hearts. Go to her luggage case, open it, and pick out her shop outfit. She only has two good ones, so she does laundry every third day or so. I think that's like an interesting, like detail about a character. Mm -hmm. Never been homeless. So I'm learning through my character. All right. Yeah. Um, that's from David Hartley. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think that speaks to something about how, like, writing fiction, reading fiction can broaden our kind of empathy, you know? Can yeah. make us think about situations that yeah. we normally wouldn't have. And they can kind of help you assess, like, the way that you, like, speaking to organization, they can kind of help you assess, like, the way that you organize your life mm -hmm. and you know if your character has certain strategies of living or um certain methods of running their life that you either agree with or disagree with that can definitely help you kind of map out what you value in your organizational styles mm -hmm. and what you can include in them too let's uh let's see Seems like a lot. It seems like a lot of people are writing like different, differently than their characters. Mm -hmm. um, Nandita is similar. Wakes up at exactly six o two every morning, and so do I. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a good like kind of specific detail to draw in from your life. Right. Oh, I like Hannah Crenshaw's answer. When I was starting out, all of my characters were like me. Now all my characters are very different. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, broadening your horizons. Yeah. Um, this person, Goblin Moon, says, I find I'm getting too stuck in the minutia of my main character's life. I think that, that this um, this prompt might be good a good way, good outlet for that. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're getting too stuck in the minutia in the story itself, um, that's good information for like you to have about your character, mm -hmm. but not necessarily something that needs to find its way into the story necessarily. Yeah. Just good kind of texture. Uh, for you as the writer. Yeah. Um, speaking to organizational tips for mm -hmm. fellow Rymos, um, I was actually looking on our Instagram page mm -hmm. earlier and I saw some really great submissions. So if you haven't checked out our Instagram stories, but they did a really great job answering the question of how, what organizational styles do you use to um, organize writing around your life or organize your life around writing. And a lot of people scheduled out their time. So they made specific dates and times during their day where they would write and they would um, push other things to different days or they would try and like one person I think um, said that they do all of their cooking on the weekends. Mm. So that way they don't have to cook during the week and they can just focus on writing. I mm. thought that was a really cool idea. It is interesting. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to survive that. I like <laughs> I like fresh food too much. Doing all meal prep on the weekends and yeah. then just eating through it the rest of the week. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it can get difficult, but if you have the time for it or if you make the time for it, mm. I think that's a really great strategy to kind of incorporate everything into your life and still add writing so that right. way you can do all of the things in your life effectively. So let's see. Uh, Georgiana shares that she's writing a memoir realized I have a routine that if I miss any step messes up my whole day. Really? That, that that's, that's like a useful thing to have discovered about yourself. Yeah. And the memoir part helps because you're writing about your life. So if you kind of miss any steps in your in writing about your life, it can kind of mess up the rest of your life mm. going on in general too. Yeah. Let's see. Here's some organizational tips from Zara writes my organization tip have post-it notes and a pen next to your bed. Mm. If you wake up with an idea, write it down and stick it somewhere. That's a great tip for yeah. sure. Um, what I do is I I'll have my phone. So I'll like have like a shortcut to voice memo recordings. Mm -hmm. And so I'll like record voice memos for myself. Mm -hmm. So I have this whole collection of files. It's just my very tired voice going like, it's 3 AM. I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's great. Let's see. Um, forced to be organized. Let's see. 
looking for more for more tips now. Hmm. You see anything in chat that you you wanna wanna foreground? Goblin Moon says, I have a folder in Evernote so that I can access it on any device. Yeah. Um, I personally have never heard of Evernote, but um, I know that OneNote is a thing as well. Mm -hmm. And then like Google Drive is a thing that you could use as well if yeah. you kind of want to do it on the go. So there's plenty of different... Any cloud-based thing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely plenty of different platforms that people can use to kind of write on the go. Mm -hmm. Another person, uh, Marley Regis says, I always have a pad, booklet, or tablet with me. That way I can note anything and everything that comes to mind. Yeah, I always have like a, a little moleskin, like pocket size thing in my back pocket mm -hmm. and a pen so I can uh, mark things down. Keep wet erase markers everywhere. I write on windows, mirrors, and bathroom tiles, and I take a photo and wipe it away. That's very cool. I like, I like the aesthetic of that. That one's from uh, Alicia. Hmm. So if you guys don't know already, I've already, we've added the, um, if you wanna add the Instagram account really quickly. How do I do that? Just type at NaNoWriMo into the, chat that way you guys can check us out on instagram and you guys can check out the stories there are a lot of good posts um about organization okay. if you have any other questions other tips I use google sheets more than i use docs great for plots and lists all in one place definitely yeah. oh yes definitely um yeah a lot of people seem to be using these the cloud things um mm -hmm. google i see mentions of OneNote. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Do, yeah. do people have like opinions on whether it's better to do like digital and then you have it like everywhere on all your devices or do people prefer having it on like paper? Like I know that I'm very much, I don't know, I like writing on paper, but then I like organizing online so that I have like, you know, access used, to it, to the organizational stuff. I get what you mean. I used to write a lot. I used to be an avid writer on paper. Mm -hmm. I actually have an entire binder filled with short stories that I never finished that are all on paper, and there's probably about 50 different pages mm -hmm. in between all of them. Um, but I think, like, my handwriting was used to be really tiny, and I also wrote in pencil. Um, so a lot of my work got erased mm. over time where it was illegible or it just yeah. wasn't it like yeah. got blurred or something. So I switched over to digital mm -hmm. after that happened. And I just have all of my writing on several different platforms so I can access this wherever I'm at. Yeah. Uh, Mary Emma says, if I have an idea in class, I just scribble it into the margins of my notebooks. My story ideas are all throughout my linguistics or history notes. I like that. That, I, I, I wonder if writers have that thing because I know that all my notebooks from like any class I've ever taken are full of like usually I'll like you know draw a line down the middle mm -hmm. and then, like one of the sides is like a story I'm writing and the other one is notes on class that are usually not that useful. Yeah. Um let's see. Uh Lighty Montai says I feel like Google Docs is better honestly. Wonder if that's a controversial statement or not. <laughs> um let's see. Keep losing the chat. Um, Goblin Noon says, I have too many lost notes and dead hard drives. Yeah, both of them mm -hmm. can fail. That might be why the cloud is better. I feel too techy saying the cloud. That's why internet things are better. Internet things are better. Uh, I'm a p paper and pen. I also use a typewriter. Very cool. Yeah. That's from Kimmy Forrester. All right, so we're gonna jump into our last prompt here. We're going to have 10 minutes to do this one. Um, we want you to focus on one moment of your character's day. So the character that you just wrote, focus on one moment of their day and go into it with as much close detail as you can. So for me, um, you know, my character, 
she's uh, I kind of brushed over the fact that she's driving 3000 miles mm -hmm. to go and see her sister. And I just briefly stated that she stopped for like gas and food and mm -hmm. bathroom breaks and stuff. So I will be mm -hmm. going into more detail about that and kind of exploring what that trip for 3000 miles was like. Mm -hmm. So, and as always, you don't have to use this prompt, even if you did like the first one, you can continue writing a schedule if you want, or you can just go free form and just, write as many words as you can yep. on anything. The goal is to just be writing and not necessarily following whatever prompts we're giving out. Yep. So again, we're gonna have 10 minutes to do this starting now.
All right, so we have about four minutes left. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
right, wrap up whatever you are finished writing. Um, time is up, so collect the rest of your thoughts and make sure that you have everything written. For the um, record, the honking was my phone vibrating, but it's it was on the table that the microphone is on. So it was like transferring over. All right. So final word counts. Who would like to share what they wrote as well? So go ahead and list any word counts that you have. Uh, list any excerpts that you'd like to give from what you were able to write down. Um, Let's see, some people got pretty massive awards, 720 oh. um, from Zara Writes. Nice. Was she one of the ones who had a lot for the last prompt? I think so. Mm. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, binary, I'm so sorry. Damn, the buzzing shook me from my train of thought. Halfway through a sentence and no idea where I was going with it. I know. Whoops. <laughs> I'll take responsibility for your lost sentence. Um, let's see, we also got... 353, 738 words from Keon. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Got a lot of people writing. Yeah. 81 words spent too much time pondering descriptive language. That's okay. I yeah. don't think there is such a thing as spending too much time pondering what words to use. Hey, 81 words is still something. Mm -hmm. So you're that's forward. actually really, really good. Yeah. Especially absolutely. if you're adding on to anything or even if you're just starting out, 81 words is still really good. Mm -hmm. Um my character is going on the road trip of her life. Mm -hmm. She has contemplated her adventure and whether or not it would be an exciting one or a terrifying one. Um, she went to McDonald's mm -hmm. and got a quarter pounder of fries so and a large classic Sprite. Red trip meal. And um, she's in the middle of stopping at a gas station to pee because she did not realize until too late that a large sprite was a bad idea <laughs> for a road trip. Uh, yeah, we're getting some more um, excerpts here. Mm. Let's see. Um, hmm, Watercolor Heart says, I wrote how my protagonist really likes showers and why. <laughs> uh, I'd love to hear why. I'd love um, to hear why too. I also love showers. <laughs> see, when she was on the streets for a while, it got uh, really got to her deeply, and it was mad at all the time. Um, she felt really dirty and gross. That's a good reason to love showers. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Let's see. <laughs> Michelle Rogue Gannon writes, all through math class, instead of thinking through a calculus problem, she focused her excellent brain on how to get rid of that sign. Switching letters around to in dog we trust was just too obvious. I'm assuming the sign is in, in God we trust. Yeah. Or is it more complex? Maybe. It might be. What's it called when letters are switched around? Anagrams? Yes. Okay. I believe. I think they're anagrams. Let's see. Um, Katie says 68 words, revising. Nice. Uh, does that mean you're revising what you wrote or you were revising something previous? Either way. Revisions are good. Thumbs up. Um, do you want to read, please? Rebecca Dugas says, Suddenly, a can sailed over our heads and landed on the stage near Janelle. Hissing, it was a, it was streaming smoke. We all hit the deck. Mm. Sounds exciting. Intense. I like the... I'm assuming it's something like tear grass grenade or something. I Probably. like the description of a can. Yeah. Um... Let's see. I think this person is writing a Batman fan fiction, and I love it. Nice. Uh, we got Amber Andrews. Dr. Malik may allow Peter to have breakfast, and he's not sure if that's a blessing or a curse. Eat and be alone with man or go to school on an empty stomach. His stomach will decide for him. Mm. All right, then. A stomach's a good a good guide for decision making. All right. Well, that is all we have planned. So thank you guys for joining us, and thank you so much for all of your comments 
and all of your excerpts and word counts and everything. Yeah, thank they were great. For writing prompts with us. And for those of you who didn't stick to prompts, thank you for not sticking to prompts and just writing. Mm -hmm. This was an excellent time to spend with all of you guys. And we hope that you join us again next time. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely click the subscribe button. So that way you get alerted for any virtual write-ins or other writing related videos that we have. And um, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye. Lami says goodbye. Okay. Oh. oh. Sporgy says goodbye. And Sporgy says goodbye. Friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.